Let's hop into this one. This is uh, three tips on how to improve the sound of your voice inside Adobe Audition. I'm going to record something very quickly here. Hello, this is Mike Russell, and I'm going to make my voice sound a little better and clearer. Now, as you can see, this is quite nicely processed already. This is the waveform up here. This is how loud things are. And this is the spectral frequency view, which shows you where all the frequencies are inside my voice. You usually don't have this enabled by default in Adobe Audition, but you can switch it on using this icon up here, show spectral frequency display, or hit Shift D. I usually leave this on by default because it gives me a good overview of how things are. First important thing to look for when you receive a recorded voice is like how much of the high end is there? If you are dealing with a call that's maybe been recorded over the internet from Zoom, it might look something like this or even, my goodness me, hopefully not, but something like this. It's missing higher frequencies, right? If I play this recording back with those frequencies deleted. Hello, this is Mike Russell and I'm going to make my voice sound. So that sounds like it's over the phone. This is more like Zoom. Hello, this is Mike Russell. Again, yes, a lower quality. And then this is full quality. Hello, this is Mike Russell. So obviously the more of these high-end frequencies you have, and it's harder to see it in the waveform view, you can see it in spectral frequency, the better audio is going to sound. Now we cannot bring back frequencies that have gone, uh, if you've taken it as a recording over the internet, but we can do our best to enhance things. So let's go ahead and do a few little bits. Now, usually the first thing I do to go ahead and make voice sound better is add on a little noise gate because that blocks out all of this background noise that's going on when I'm not talking. Usually these sections in between the speech should be completely black but spectral frequency would indicate otherwise in terms of background noise. Amplitude and compression, dynamics, auto gate. Let's set this to default, auto gate and then we'll set it up. Now I've got other videos on how to exactly set a noise gate so I'm going to do this roughly to get it about right. Uh, but go and search noise gate on my channel to find more. I'm just going to push the hold up. And again, I talk in more detail on why I do those things in my noise gate videos. Hello, this is Mike Russell, and I'm going to make my voice sound a little better and clearer. Okay, that sounds pretty decent, pretty good. Uh, we've got some nice noise gate going on there now. And as you can see, we've cleaned up the background noise. So that's the first thing you can do with any recording. Next, I'd usually go in and I'd find parametric equalizer. It's one of my favorite effects ever. Again, default it so you've got a nice flat line here. Switch on the high pass filter and then I can ramp this up. As I ramp this high pass up, it's going to thin out the voice. Hello, this is Mike Russell. Now, interestingly enough, we can place this at different places, but usually around 100 hertz and we'll knock off the low end. Any rumble, any road noise, any mic plosives or knocks or things like that will be eliminated. Hello, this is Mike Russell, and it doesn't really affect the voice, but when we're doing radio imaging, as we love to do here at Music Radio Creative, often you'll find producers will push this high pass up further. Usually default for radio imaging can be around 250 hertz, so when you hear those voiceovers saying, we play the best music, and it sounds so produced, well, that is simply because the producer is just pushing that number up. Hello, this is Mike Russell. And of course, if I was to do an imaging, like, you know, kind of record on the end here. Let's switch off the preview mode, of course. The best hits play here. And then we use that high pass filter on that. The best hits play here. And that's obviously going to work nicely with some sound effects and stuff. So I'm not going to put it so much. I'll leave it about 100 hertz. Again, I've got more detailed videos on how to exactly notch that number in. I usually like to boost up the high end and I usually like to change the shape of the high end here just to get a bit more clarity. Hello, this is Mike Russell. And sometimes I'll spend quite a while notching through frequencies, but for now I'm just going to do a basic EQ curve here. Maybe take some out around here and push some up around here. Hello, this is Mike Russell. And now already we've gone from this. Hello, this is Mike Russell. Not much going on in terms of difference with EQ, just a subtle change. We don't want to go nuts here. And the final thing I do just to make this, and this is kind of a, a two tips in one really, so I've given you the first tip of using a, a noise gate or auto gate as it's called in audition. Second tip of using a parametric equalizer. And the third tip, oh, compression all the way. Now, as you can see with my voiceover, I already run it through a mic preamp and processor. Mine uh, in particular is the DBX286S. It sits here blurred out behind me somewhere over there uh, in my audio rack. It works in real time to make me sound better. So I'm already a little bit compressed. You may see some voiceovers uh, that have much more dynamic range, more peaks and more valleys in terms of the waveform. But here we're just gonna add some light compression. 
Easiest way to set up a compressor so it doesn't go over the top is get it to where you want it, so switch it on. And again, if you want to watch more detailed tutorials on what all these buttons do, search compressor on my channel. This is a very quick tutorial. Uh, so threshold we'll leave there. Ratio, I'm going to push up to maybe a radio imaging kind of area of 3 to 1. That makes it quite sausage-like. Of course, the volume goes down, so we have to turn the makeup gate up, right up. Oh, too loud. Uh, so uh, how do we get around that? Well, it's just a quick tip for you. Switch on the limiter, and when the limit, see the limiter limits it, but if this light is on red all the time, Hello, this is that's too loud. So back it off until you're tickling the red light. Tick, do you like that? T just just tickling the red tickling. light, Isabella. Yeah, I just tickling. brought you in when I said the word tickle. Hello, and this I'm is not tickling the red light, so let's turn it up. Let's tickle the red light. Hello. Oh my goodness, tickling the red. No, no, that's that's scratching the red light. Hello, this is Mike Russell, and I'm going to make my. Let's turn it up a bit hello, more. Hello, this is Mike Russell. Come on, just hello. Uh, come hello, on, this is come on. Hello, hello, yes. Hello, this is Mike there Russell. There we go. We tickled the red light at 11.9 dB. Now we have increased the voice to as loud as we can. We've compressed it as much as we can. Parametric EQ. That may not be great if you're doing narration, a documentary, or an audio book, but if you're forming a base for radio imaging or something you want to sound really decent, you can go from that looking waveform. Hang on, let's switch off spectral. You can go off from something that looks like that to something that looks like that. Why might you want to do this? Well, it'll, first of all, cut through any kind of music bed, uh, like a hot butter through knife, which is amazing. It'll just sound good, it'll sound clear, and it'll work so well. And now, with all these effects on, we start with the original hello this is mike russell and we ended up with hello this is mike russell clearer crisper just easier to use and in three simple steps three that's three yes three simple steps you can make any voice sound better thumbs up subscribe for more music radio creative.com